in this video a circuit that proved to be quite successful, though I had not expected it. It's made with a 555 chip and there are some uh, variations uh, uh, according to that 555 chip. And this is the chip that's used here. The NA555P from Texas Instruments. And you can also find printed on the chip this code and the logo. But on the other hand, I'm almost sure that it will work with any 555 chip. I made this circuit earlier and in that case it was a triangle wave generator and also a square wave generator here in that other circuit but not here in this circuit you can take out a square wave but here it is the triangle wave output so that's important uh, this does not function properly, this output, and that is output 3 of that chip. But perhaps with another uh, 555 chip it will work anyway. The schematic again. Decoupling here. Gives a somewhat better waveform. Um, peaks are more or less, say, wiped out a little bit anyway. And this is very important. Here we set the frequency. We do that here with this potentiometer. And let's look what happens when we uh, turn that potentiometer put my screwdriver in. Frequency 11 kilohertz, waveform is visible. Slowly turn that potentiometer. Frequency goes up very very sub substantially to 127 kilohertz. Back again And again, only the scope. Uh, is this a pure triangle wave? Well, pure enough to do experiments with and perhaps change it with a filter uh, to a sine wave. This is the final part here of that for, uh, for of that. 47k potentiometer and you can see that here it jumps but anyway it's a useful circuit and that also indicates that you need here a high quality potentiometer. I think it must be linear perhaps it must be lo uh, lo logarithmic but anyway don't know that exactly. When you change this resistor here, so for instance into a 1k resistor, the frequency will bend, will change, and you will get to higher frequencies, even higher than 127 kilocycles. I had not expected that, but anyway, and this resistor here, and the capacitor here, set the frequency band. So when you want to go to lower frequencies, make that capacitor give it a higher value, say 10 nanofarad or 5 nanofarad. Then you will find another frequency band.
So, not so much more to tell. Again, the schematic. I have had many comments in the past that I did not show the complete schematic. And I had I did I did too much panning. Okay, uh, that was enough. Here is the whole circuit. You can see that chip in the middle. Of course it's a breadboard circuit. But I'm absolutely sure you can make a printed circuit for this. Here the output capacitor. Of course, at the output here you can take out DC. Uh, sorry, AC, but in a DC way. A changing voltage here, but here there is a separation capacitor that uh, gives, makes that you have at the output here only the AC signal. It's a blocking capacitor, it blocks DC. But when you need, for instance, a, a, a DC voltage that swings here, you can use this output here, this location. So the separation capacitor, the frequency potentiometer, and all the other electronic components, though not very much. So it's a very simple circuit with, in my opinion, very good properties. So, let's watch again what happens here. And now I turn the potentiometer quite quick, quickly. So it is a very broad frequency band and I've studied at first the properties of the 555 chip in the linear data book from national semiconductors from the 1970s and they gave me more or less the confidence that this could work with such a broad frequency band. 